this week. Buckle your safety belts and put your tray table in the upright position as we welcome back none other than Matt Booth. Check in, we check in with Mel from M. Bombay Cigars, and our debonair ideal segment will offer advice on recommending cigars to friends. To round things out, we'll talk about our Stogies of the Week, so stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the Stogie Geek Show. This segment is brought to you by Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family. The Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro with Tobacco's from one farm. The blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and a filler from the original Cuban scenes grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please you and take you back on a journey to yesteryear. And by Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing cigar smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Paleo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offers the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra-premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Nea, and Baracoa. Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigars uses a seed-to-humidor approach as all tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factories in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Progressive flavor construction is an old Cuban technique where the cigar is designed to increase in strength as the cigar is smoked. This technique, combined with premium tobacco, provides a perfectly balanced and pleasurable smoking experience. Roberto P. Duran invites you to make your, their premium your standard. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 142 for May 28th, 2015. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined on the lines via Skype by none other than Will Cooper. Hey, greetings, Paul. <laughs> How you doing, Will? Oh, I'm fired up right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could be more fired I- up. That's it. <laughs> Uh, so, Will, I don't think we have any other kind of notes. Or more, um, prepa- or more prepared. That's right. Um, I'm kind of finishing up my um, uh, Havana Cigar Club exclusive, uh, the Cien Años uh, Perfecto uh, from earlier, which is fantastic. you got to smoke through those because um, they're so well-aged. They're good, they're good to smoke now. So uh, I did that on, uh, on my previous show, so I'm finishing that up. I'm looking forward to smoking this gorgeous M. Bombay cigar. Yeah. Um, I'm, actually, yeah I'm actually wrapping up a cigar from our from our next guest and the interesting thing is this cigar is like a davidoff meets like i know there there is one big company but it's like the davidoff brand meets the camacho brand and i'm smoking a interesting room 101 ichiban roxo which is an exclusive for cigar realm in ashland virginia and and i'm telling you i'm getting the boat best of both worlds with this cigar it's very interesting well it's interesting you say that because mr matt booth of room 101 cigars is on the lines via skype matt welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Wonderful. Again, I love what you've done with your hair, Matt. You're looking spectacular, as oh. always. Do you use Thanks. a salon? Do you use a salon or a barber shop? Cooper, I think that's my personal business, man. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we want to know who does your hair and makeup because we want to hire them for the show. That's right. What, my that... mom cuts my hair, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay. Now, so we're here. This is episode 142? Yes. 142, I see. It's my utmost honor to be here. Well, it's a pleasure having you, as, as I'm, always, I'm, Matt. I'm, I'm announcing that uh, ahead of time. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you, yeah. Um, so, now, Matt, what, what's going on in, in your world? Are there cigars that you're working on? Like, what, what are some of your latest projects that you're working on? 
Well, as I mentioned before, I, I will be dead in 28 days, so I'm trying to wrap some projects up very quickly here. That's a very sh short percent. time, short time frame. Yeah, you know, you know, such is uh, such is the life of the cherry blossom. You know, it's uh, a short, beautiful life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what are you trying to squeeze into those 28 days, Matt? Short-lived uh, career in pornography. <laughs> Trip to Phuket. Are are there cigars that you're working on, or? Oh, oh man! Are there yes. other are there other lifestyle things? Did we covered this last time? Is it kind of like a, a lifestyle brand that you're working on? Is that the appropriate term for it? Still, I, I suppose, I suppose, whatever your persuasion might be, whatever your angle, you know, I guess you'd call it a lifestyle brand. I would like to make. Uh, an announcement. I have made this announcement on one show prior, but I, I do want everyone to know that, that Room 101 is the premium tobacco industry's first and only salon cigar brand. I just want to, well, I also want to make that very clear. But that's why I asked the question about barbershop versus salon, because I, I kind of had heard that. Mm -hmm. I thought you might have been hinting at, at that. Okay. You know? <laughs> I just want to make sure we could get that announcement here on Stogie Geeks. So what and, is, and what is the salon cigar brand? No, no, nobody knows, man. Okay. <laughs> Nobody knows. What's a boutique cigar brand? Uh -huh. Is it a combination uh -huh. of production, uh -huh. Uh -huh. limited tobaccos? Uh, no. Nobody knows, man. No. Nobody. I'm not going there. Also, right. antibacterial. Antibacterial. Dial soap. Isn't dial soap supposed to be antibacterial? It, yes, I believe so. Is that Is boutique it? soap? It could be, could be. That's a good. Well, it's, a, it's a perfectly valid analogy. Okay. You know, do you, my dear friend Robert Caldwell, I had this really itchy spot on uh, my actually what, what's actually my left butt cheek actually, and it keeps reoccurring. And he told me that it's actually from stress, and I realized that I'm under a bit of pressure consistently, and so when this this itch flares up. On my ass, I, I quell this itch, not with creme, not with any, uh, you know, home remedy, so to speak. I just, I just keep repeating, you know, salon, salon. We are salon, and then, it, and then, it, and then it just everything tones down. The itch, the ebbs and flows of my life go back to one fine continuum of peace. Have you tried Dial Soap? To I do. Oh, soap. Okay, <laughs> just checking. I like it because it's antibacterial, therefore it's boutique. Yes. Yeah, but Dove has one quarter moisturizing cream in it. You do realize that, right? Look, man, don't you don't talk to me about Dove, man. I had a, I had an incident. Okay, <laughs> not, not, it's my rider that I would have a hairstylist present, which clearly there is not. I would have red M and M's only, and no discussion of Dove soap. <laughs> this is all fun. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Matt, are there cigars that you're working on now, or what are some of your uh, most recent releases uh, in the cigar world? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, cigars. Cigars. So, we have recently released uh, a very pleasant and interesting project that is a custom for retail project. Cooper alluded to that earlier, okay? The Ichiban series, which is a fantastic blend. I happen to feel this one of my favorite currently in our collection. What Ichiban is, is kind of an answer to an issue I kept running into where it was, it was a problem that everyone wishes they had, right? The, you know, you have these beautiful retail partners, your relationship is blossoming. They say, hey, Matt Booth, I would like to take our relationship to the next level. I would like to make a custom cigar with you and my store. And I say, retailer X, I love this. This is an amazing idea. Exceptional. Let's do it. And then what happens is you talk, you go back and forth about the best factory and the, the tobacco and the salon and the boutique and the antibacterial and all this stuff, man, all these details. And when, when options are endless, right, and when the decisions that you are afforded to make are endless, no one makes any decisions. And therefore, you're left a year down the road, uh, you know, with no private label cigar, as they call it, as my uncle Leroy calls it, cigar. So what I decided to do is I was going to formulate this series that was going to be tailored and 
its sole purpose would be to uh, launch in collaboration with specific retailers. So it's a series that's constructed of eight different sizes, eight different shapes, if you will. And each shape is assigned exclusively to one specific retail partner. And not only to get this fine custom cigar, but it's all you know branded for them and all the trimmings for their store. And you know the gnomes come down from the North Pole early and, and we put on this amazing event, dial and dove soap for everybody. It, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now, have you done this with more than one retailer so far or um, just one so far? No, 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 no. We have actually launched officially three. Uh, and three more are in, in various stages of development, as it were. And now, uh, does each store have a different blend? No, no. The blend is the same. Mm -hmm. the blend is the same. They are, they are, what they're doing is they're committing to a specific size of that blend. So each store has a different size of the same blend? Correct. But now, do you, how, how much do you tweak the blend for a different size? Do you adjust the filler between each, between each blend and the percentage of filler? Did you say twerk? Tweak. tweak. I said, no, twerk is actually in the dictionary now, but I did say tweak. I would like to say that we only twerk our blends. <laughs> but, we do, but we do twerk them. Uh, we twerk the composition to work properly with the different vitolas, if you will. Nice, nice. Um, so uh, tell me about the, <clears throat> the wrapper uh, binder and filler. Uh, the wrapper is a, a beautiful Habano from Ecuador. I've had great success using that. Uh, on several of my blends, I find it to be tasty and intriguing. And the fillers are Nicaraguan with a Honduran binder. Fantastic, spicy, uh, flavors cascading upon you uh, like, uh, you know, like, uh, like water flowing down MC Hammer's junk in the Pumps and the Bumps video. Do you remember that? Is that a good <clears throat> visual? It's him with the, do you recall this? You're not I, responding. You're no, not responding. I do. So I, I need you here with me. Man. Junk's in the pump. I don't recall pumps that video. The pumps. Junk. pumps and the bumps. Pumps and the bumps. Pumps and... I remember it? I can't touch this. Is I it do. And pumps, pumps and a bump. Is it pumps right. and a bump? Pumps and a bump. Or is it... No, I thought it was bumps plural, though. Is it bumps? Pumps and the bumps? Pumps and pump, the bumps? Pumps and a bump. Are you, are you Googling this, Cooper? Absolutely, because I have no friggin' clue. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could count on you. You're, you're so quick was, with I the mean, Google. I was very provocative, and I was making a reference to that, the flavor explosion that you do experience <clears throat> smoking this fine uh, yes. So are, are these, uh, what, what, what's like the, the body? Is it medium body? Is it full body? I'd like to say it's medium plus. Mm-hmm. I'd say for a person that is not uh, a consistent cigar smoker, I think it would be a more full experience. Mm -hmm. And for someone that is a regular cigar smoker, depending on their uh, persuasion, as it were, I think it would be anywhere from medium to a little bit above there. When you take, when you take on these projects, Matt, do you find that you can kind of uh, break out of the mold of what you'd normally do for one of your own releases and do something that may be a different size or a different blend or a different strength profile because you're making a limited number for just that one store? So do you find you can kind of break out of the mold, so to speak? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, when, the, when, when you're dealing with smaller quantities, you may be able to uh, leverage different tobaccos that say you don't have enough for a, a full-scale production. Mm. So you can get very intimate and very salon with the way you blend the cigar. Very salon. Yeah. So I, I, now that makes total sense to me, dude. Uh -huh. Total sense. Uh -huh. Now I've got it. Like the light bulb went off, dude. I got it. I got it. Uh -huh. That's great. So Education now – what kind of beers have you been drinking? Have you been doing like pairing these uh, cigars um, w with beer, or are there a particular beer that's uh, kind of tickling your fancy lately? I, I really enjoy this uh, brand I find at the corner store called the Four Loco. It is infused with B vitamins, I believe, and so, and other sorts of elixirs that enhance my daily performance. Actually, excellent. Mm -hmm. I'll have yeah. to look for that in elixir. Elixir. <clears throat> so Ichiban, where does that name come from? What does it mean? I think it I think it's from is it West Virginia? West Virginia comes from? Does that sound 
Virginia to you? <laughs> it does. It sounds more Japanese, but I, you know. Yeah, you know they. I don't see the world through your lens, Matt. So. Oh God! They. Woo! 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 You have a very unique lens through which you see the world, which well, we, we all lens. love and appreciate. That lens. Thank you, man. Thank you. I know, uh, where, I know where I recognize the name. It is a Korean and Japanese restaurant in Cranston, Rhode Island. <laughs> oh, dear. It is. There you go. It's my tribute. <laughs> to now. the Ichiban Korean and Japanese restaurant in Cranston, Rhode Island. Look, every time you say Rhode Island, all I can hear is my dear friend Kirk Kendall saying that's straight Rhode Island. And I don't know <laughs> if that's a term of endearment. Uh, probably uh, both uh, endearment and not endearment. It, it depends on how you say it. <laughs> oh, that's kind of a salon term then. It could, it's yes. Kind of yes, person. it's very salon. It's funny. Now you got me using the word salon. We haven't been in, we're like not even t- 10 minutes in the interview. And you see? I'm, I'm using you see your, how it happens? Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, no, Ichiban uh, Japanese for number one or the original or the best. It's a term that's used a lot within, uh, it's applied to a lot of various products, you know, uh, from beers to auto parts to you name it. It's the Ichiban number one. And so uh, this cigar was destined to be the Ichiban number one. Excellent. (laughs) Will, do you have more questions for Mr. Matt Booth? Oh dear. Who's, un- who's Uncle Lee? Uncle Le- Leroy? Did you say Leroy? Uncle Leroy now is my uncle. And he is the gentleman that first introduced me to the idea that cigar smoking was one of the coolest things that you could do on the planet. And you actually named a cigar after him. Oh, Matt, we, lo- we lost Matt's audio. What happened? He froze. His audio went first, though, which was kind of strange. We haven't had a guest. We haven't had a and guest there is, of course, the MC Hammer video. Okay. But is that pump, pump in the rump? Where, pump in the rump. Okay, are you back? I, the thing froze. It, it, yeah. it did. And the, the production staff was putting up pictures of the MC Hammer reference from earlier. We can't see okay. your video, though, Matt. Did you see the banana hammock? You see uh, now I see the banana like, hammock, yes. And, and see the water comes and it cascades down. Yes. You see what I'm talking about? And this is a flavor explosion that I'm trying to <clears throat> describe. Matt, if you could re-enable your video, we can't see you oh, yet. Oh, how can I do that? There's a little, I... little camera that you click on. It has a line through it. Oh, is that the thing? It... Yeah, click it. Yeah, just click, click it. it. There you go. Technology, man. So you were talking about Uncle Lee, Leroy? Yeah, and you made uh, a cigar after him. That is correct. That is my Uncle Lee. Yeah. Did, you, did we lose that whole thing? Yeah, we lost I, the whole thing. We, we did. We did. We did. I say. No, uh, my Uncle Lee is the gentleman that, uh, in my family that first introduced me to the idea that cigar smoking was one of the coolest things I could possibly be doing. And so ultimately, stage one is I was... Very, very proud to be able to hand him a box of cigars with my brand name on them. And now it has come full circle. I hand him box with his name on them. Very nice. Uncle mm-hmm. Lee, very happy. I believe his words to my mom were, why is he doing this for me? Which I take uh, that he uh, is pleased. So there was a little bit of a challenge getting that cigar to market. What, what exactly happened with that? Because we heard it was coming out late last year, and then it was kind of delayed, and then now, it's, uh, now I'm starting to see it make its way to some shops. What happened with that? You know, there's, there are so many trials and tribulations when running your own business and hurdles that you must jump hoops you must jump through, if you will. And, uh, you know, due to this, that, and the other, we had a slight delay in the release of the product. However, it is now ready for your consumption in all its glory. So it, it found a, you found a way to get it to market. Yes. And when okay. I say all its glory, I want to reference back again, if we're paying attention to 
the pumps and the bumps video because that's a lot of glory. If you know what I'm talking about, I know you saw it. I know you saw it. We did. I did. I saw like a lot of great pool scene and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, the pool. See, that's what I'm talking. The pool scene. And they're like they're undulating, and the music is happening, and it's the, the very poor early '90s rap music is also happening, and, and you know the whole thing. So what, what's the name yes. of – did you call it the Uncle Leroy cigar? What's, which, which cigar did you dedicate to Uncle Leroy? Uncle Lee. It's called the Uncle Lee. It's called the Uncle Lee, man. Excellent. Yeah. And what sizes does the Uncle Lee come in? It comes in one size. It comes in one size. It is our Ronfla shape, our Perfecto uh, shape that uh, is featured in our Namakubi Ecuador series. Sweet. I you know, very, you know, very punctual. You know, Matt, possibly more than any other brand I've seen, you've kind of created these sizes. Roxo, uh, Mutante, Ranfla, and they've just kind of, they're just, did you ever think that would happen? Like, you're not the guy, basically, we think of, I'm going to smoke that Toro Robusto. You, you have these, like, unique sizes. How did you, like, these just seem to be staples in your mind. How did you come up? with these particular sizes in general. Cooper, I love you. You are such a dear friend. And because you are a dear friend, I am going to let you know that my mind never stops spinning. I, I, I can't help myself. It's like, uh, you know, I have ideas that, that uh, plague me. You know what I'm saying? So I try to entertain myself by, uh, you know, well, I try to entertain myself any way possible, basically. And so one way that I entertain myself is I give all my cigars different names because they're unique, you know, they're unique. A lot of times I name, uh, you know, my friends something different because to me they are, uh, you know, their mom named them one thing, but I happen to feel another way about them. How can I call them what their mom called them, right? How can I call that cigar Robusto if I look at it and I feel that it's a rock cell. Is that Salon? Yep. Are no. We, are we Salon here? Yeah, we're Salon. <laughs> now Will's using it. <laughs> I can't stop it. <laughs> Daddy Cigar. This is Vinny Cigar I love. Yeah, I so, mean, it's, it's... Go ahead. What? No, finish your thought. <laughs> I, I interrupted you. No, I, I, my, thought, my thought is done. Cooper. Yeah, I mean, it's just interesting because, like I said, you know, some of these, you, you, you have some of these artesian perfectos out there, which are, you know, you look at them, they're, they're just really, they're Arte great works of cigar art, you know, when you look at them. Thank you. Yep. I happen to think they're cute. Yeah, they're cute. Nice. I like it when yeah. men can toss around the word cute. Hey, you know, we're, we're secure in our manhood here on Stogie Geeks. It's empowering. <laughs> I like to empower men through interesting language and cigar, of course. Right. And then, you know, another thing that's interesting that you've done. What are, what are you is, doing? What are you doing? What, what am doing? I doing? What are you doing? So you're like he's not even. He's just he's on MySpace right now. No, he's, I. He's on Friendster on his it, laptop. One one of our video one of our videos got flagged for having copyrighted content on the show we just produced, and I I don't know where that comes from, I'm, and I'm very concerned about this. And I, I hope that our MC Hammer there, there references be. to pumping a dump or rumping a pump or whatever that song was don't also get flagged. So don't sing the song you, because YouTube may not publish our video. Are you more concerned with that than our interview? I, 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 I don't well, know. You know, Will, Will was, it was during Will's questioning. I apologize. All right. Is you know, you okay. All right. You know what? Is I'll, everybody else you uh, on MySpace while, while that's happening? Or is no, they, just no, just you. Oh, okay. Well, then that, then, okay. Then I apologize. Thanks for calling me out, though. Sorry, man. I thought everybody <laughs> saw If you didn't do it, I was going to do it. <laughs> I thought everybody saw that, man. I don't know the te I don't know how this works, man. Okay, we're here. And I and I will say that now he looks very 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 enthused about this. Yes, I'm, I'm always enthused when you come on the show, man. I want to Why has it been so long, man? I you need to come here in studio. Is that that's what needs to happen. 
we need I to would, we need to have I, some some beer, some cocktails, some cigars, and we need to hang out. I would be see. I, I I ran I ran into Matt several times, but but man, I just can't keep up partying with him. And then um, I keep forgetting to ask him. And then I ran into him up in uh, Mooresville um, a couple months ago, and I said, "You gotta get back on the show." And and deal, Matt Matt came right back to us with the date. So I'll take the blame on that. <laughs> you were in Mooresville, so I, have you been going? To, what uh, kind of events you've been doing at some some shops like in Mooresville? My dad lives in Mooresville, so I'm very familiar oh. with the city. Cool, but was that the Jr. thing? The that was the Jr. thing. Yeah, yeah the grand o- Matt was at the grand opening of Jr. Yeah, man, our dear friends over there opened a brand new store, gorgeous shop, man, and so I flew out to hang out with them and support their uh, this evolution within their business. It was the place. It was the first place I was able to really get in a long time they had the room of golds up there which uh kind of one of your hidden gems it's i think it's been the toughest cigar you made to find was that the room of gold i just had a tough time tracking that one down well that's because nobody buys it coop it's <laughs> but coop says it's a hidden gem so what what's what what's the room of gold like what's what's the blend what's what's special about oh, it it's the uh it's the daruma the original daruma blend uh, except we swapped out the uh, Habano wrapper for a San Andreas. Mm-hmm. And it changes the profile, obviously, dramatically. Um, we called it Daruma Gold simply because none of the other elements of the, the cigar's composition were altered. And to me, it's uh, a bit salty for my palate. Uh, however, you know, some people, it's one of their favorites, man, because it's all personal preference. So. What, uh, what types of tobaccos have you been playing with, Matt, when you visit the factories? When, like, when was your fat last uh, factory trip? Uh, well, they, they do have a lot of new Nicaraguan stock now. Uh, the factory is somewhat flush with that as a material at this, mm-hmm. at this which is, which is uh, I don't want to say a, a brand new thing for us at that factory, but it's a, but it's a, you know, a, more, recent, a more recent occurrence. You know? So I've been tinkering with a lot of that and getting, you know, it's like a whole new... Uh, you know, learning a whole new instrument or learning a new song, something like that, man. It's a very different program. Mm. Some things are the same. Some things very different. Mm-hmm. What, what's the blending process like for you, Matt, when you go blend a cigar? Like uh, where where I, do, you, do you start with, and I like to ask this question of lots of people who blend cigars, right? Like, do you start with an idea of the type of cigar you want to create in terms of who you want to market to or what flavor profile you're trying to emulate. Like maybe you had a beer and you're like, wow, I picked up on these interesting flavors. Like I wonder if I can, you know, make a cigar that either goes with it or has some of those different flavor components or characteristics of these other kind of flavors you're experiencing in beer and food or, or whatever. Or like, like where do you start and how do you go through the process? I mean, normally I, I start by getting drunk on codeine. Uh, after that, though, <laughs> yes, after uh, that, I, you know, I, I like, I, you know, we we play a bit. You know, we we search for different uh, flavor profiles, and of course, different tobaccos have to become friends with other tobaccos. Some work phenomenally together, and some hate each other. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm fortunate enough that I've been doing this long enough that I have a a good collection of blends that I can actually use as a foundation or a jumping off point, if you will. You know, to begin to tweak from blend A. You know, if I'm if I'm looking for, you know, and I and I always look to uh, fill voids in my collection, uh, flavor profile wise, if you will. You know, um, you know, I want I want to have a fully comprehensive line of cigars, and that's both you know style and offering as far as its aesthetic presentation but at the same time it's the you know the core content of the product the flavor you know shapes sizes flavors etc so i'm always looking to fill voids in my collection you know san andreas was uh, originally kind of one of my first attempts at filling that specific flavor void in my collection definitely not one of my favorite cigars it's definitely not made for me uh, it's made for someone else that really enjoys that. And I have people that have told me, I, I smoke nothing out of Room 101's offerings except for the San Andreas because that's the only one that I like. Yeah, yeah. So you're right. You have to have those different uh, flavor profiles for the different audiences. So if someone was going to smoke one, something from your line first thing in the morning, I'm up at 5.30 a.m. and I have to drive from Rhode Island to Boston like I had to this week, Like, which one would you light up? Well, I mean, me personally, I would have one of my Namakubi Papichulos, man, but 
that's one of my favorite cigars out of our entire collection. It's a little yeah. lighter, of course, it gets yeah. stronger in the small size, and uh, it's a pleaser, man. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. A, <laughs> I remember Stokey Santa talking very fondly, and I remember him uttering the words Papa Chulo, which I think oh. is great that you get all of us saying these awesome terms that relate to your cigars, and I very vividly remember him saying that uh, and calling that as one of his favorites as well. So Nice, man. I'm honored. So what about uh, after dinner? Like, What's one of the spiciest, uh, fullest-bodied cigars that you would read well, for after dinner? You have to go for, well, now, because we have the Uncle Lee. Uncle Lee would be uh, a great option. You have, of course, the Namakubi Ecuador series, which is phenomenal. And if you have the uh, ability to track down some of the Ichiban stuff, I would highly recommend that as well. I think any three of those, any one of those three, rather, would be pleasing, pleasantly, pleasantly pleasing. So Matt, I know that you're I know that you're a beer connoisseur and I've kind of gotten away from beer lately and I've been experimenting a lot with different kinds of cocktails, which has been an interesting kind of experiment as they've got a lot of depth and different flavor profiles and it's fun to play around with. Um, but I want to kinda of get back into beer. So I want kind of your recommendations as to, you know, what's some of the stuff you've been aging, what's some of the stuff that is just coming out that you that you're you're really liking? You know, I have to be very honest with you, man. I'm more of a, just an alcohol fan in general, not necessarily beer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have had uh, some very, very interesting stuff that was gifted to me by a one Casper Johnson of Latelier fame. He, he happens to be a, a huge beer guy. So I defer to him on that, actually. Mm. I could call him and ask him. Yeah. There's one that's like, uh, you know, aged in bourbon barrels and it's stronger and, you know, the, you know I like that because it was Yeah, it's a, a Kentucky bourbon ale that's pretty good. There you go. Yeah. I believe that was it. I believe that was it. Yeah. Excellent. And then, and, and then some of them have me, when I'm traveling, they have me buy these giant bottles with the, the beautiful labels on them that are, like, limited, you know, and I go buy these things for people. Sometimes I drink some of them. Nice. You know. <clears throat> So, uh, Will, did you have more questions for Matt uh, yeah. in terms of like, yeah. some mechanics things before we get into other topics? Yeah. So, Matt, you know, one thing that was real interesting, uh, uh -huh. this was probably right before I saw you, Davidoff made a pretty big announcement in terms of what they're doing in Honduras. Uh, they, they, seem, they seem to make a very big commitment to yeah. – I'm sorry, Matt. Yeah, the um, – you seem to make a very they, David seem to make a very that? big um Who's whispering? Who's that voice? That's, sorry. Getting, that was I, our, I yeah, well yeah. I so Matt I closed my laptop to to I heard really it too, focus and I, got all, and, I closed my laptop so that I, you wanted me to focus on the interview so we we, we got into it and then uh, our production staff needed to, to talk to us and then they can do that but the live people can't hear I us. So totally it truly is up. the voice in your head. All right. I let me let, let me ask my question again. So Davidoff, the parent company, they made a pretty big announcement in terms of Honduras. Big, it seemed like they made a very big commitment to working in Honduras. Uh, they're going to be building a new factory. They're going to be um, acquiring some or acquiring some farms. So Room 101, I consider it, it's, a Honduran, it's a Honduran brand. What, that seemed to, I took that, Matt, as a very big commitment to the work you're doing. I'm just kind of curious on your thoughts with that. Well, you know, uh, and I, uh, how should I say this? I, I am overwhelmed in general with the success of the Room 101 brand in the premium tobacco world, if you will. Um, and it was somewhat uh, validated or tremendously validated rather by, you know, Hans Christian's announcement uh, to, that they were breaking ground on the new factory. Um, he actually did name in his press release uh, – Two of the main, uh, two of the main reasons for this expansion was the growth with the two brands uh, in their portfolio are experiencing. One is Camacho, and the other is Room 101. And so, uh, it is a huge commitment. It's a huge commitment to their company in general. I mean, they they're um, they're they're making great strides right now to to expand on all fronts, re from retail to manufacturing and and everything in between. So. It's a very interesting time to be involved with them. But yes, the, their commitment to working in Honduras is very big, Cooper, big. 
this big, like this it, much. It, it, yeah. This, it, this, this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, so that, I mean, so, you know, so that's, that's a pretty big statement for you right now in terms of, um, you know, Davidoff just seems, I mean, Room 101 kind of a, it, it, it's a, it's a, what I call it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, diff, it's a brand that really stands out in the Davidoff portfolio. And it seems like that they've given you a lot of creativity that you, you, you can work with as well. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, uh, they've been an amazing partner for me to work with over the last six years. And I think that, uh, you know, our relationship is just getting warmed up. So I think that there's, uh, as far as we've come, there's uh, much further yet to go. I think we're both in it for the long haul. Yep. Matt, Matt when, you, when you smoke cigars outside of your own line, what, what do you tend to, to reach to? Oh, I like that Fausto. Hot, sizzling, peppery. Pete Johnson all in my face. <laughs> Pete Johnson. I think that's the best description of that cigar ever, Matt. Is that recorded? Because I would like you to play that. That was that he was that. It, for advertising, you can just put his logo. It was it, 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 it was very accurate description. It is. It's spicy. It's peppery. It's in your face. It's Pete Johnson. It, it is. It's it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So you're liking the Fausto? Huh? I I picked up some of those actually the other day. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to smoke those now. Mm. Very nice. Then you have one of my favorite, uh, again, one of my favorite, I guess I would call it more modern cigars. Uh, unfortunately, not a salon cigar, but I believe it could be considered a boutique cigar. It is the Kill Bill by La Poblina. Mm-hmm. Again, very spicy, small. I like the small. It's comfortable. It's compact. It's convenient. You know? Mm. What, no. Favorite. Matt, what about from the Davidoff line? I mean, being you know in kind of the Davidoff family, what are some of your favorites that uh, come out? Of, I'm a, I'm actually a big fan of Davidoff Avo uh, cigars, but uh, you know I'm curious to hear your your kind of take because it's a very different profile from oh, yeah. the cigars that you produce, from the cigars you described in the Fausto sure. and the Kill Bill, right? Well, I mean, I think my one of my, if not my favorite offering from their portfolio is the uh, their short perfecto format of the Colorado Claro. Which, again, kind of brings me into that sector of what I really like. It has, it has just enough of that, that thing that is very tasty to me, man. Very nice. That, so, uh, that may okay. be one of my most favorite Davidoff cigars. Ah. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm, I'm not just saying because you – like, really, if you go back and listen to the show – Yep, we speak true. very highly of that cigar, and it is. It has a very – in that size specifically, yeah. it has just all kinds of awesome flavor things going on that, yeah, appeal yeah, to that's it. Where, that's where that blend meets up with the size in a, an amazing head-on collision of enjoyment. So, Matt, uh, in, what do you have coming out uh, next? Are there, is there things that you're working on that are coming out? I know IPCPR is coming up. You're probably not at liberty to discuss, but is there anything uh, coming out from Room 101 that you'd like to discuss on the show? Aside from cigars? Um, cigars would be great, but if you have other things in your salon that I, are coming out, we'd love, we'd love to hear about them. In my salon, uh, no, I have a couple uh, projects that I've been working on for about the past year. Uh, that we are going to release at the trade show. They are cigar product. Yeah, very nice. Uh, they will be ready at that time, and they will be gorgeous. People can come and, you know, uh, try them, taste test them, and then when I'm not looking, uh, obviously steal some of them out of our booth at the trade show. It would be great. Now, uh, I also am working on some new series of, uh, you know, some new ring series and whatnot to be mm-hmm. manufactured mm-hmm. in stainless steel, titanium, and all sorts of all metals, you know, uh, forged carbon fiber, things like that, really kind of taking our accessory collection in the affordable sector to the next level as well. So um, I'm really attacking on all fronts, man. That's good to hear. I gotta, I'm, uh, I'm going to look into some of that. I, I, I'm a big fan of the silver-colored kind of jewelry, which is funny because my family uh, actually was in the jewelry business and manufactured uh, 14 karat gold jewelry for a long time, you know, in the 80s when that was like a big thing. Oh, Asadorian. Asadorian, Armenian jewelry. Yeah, you got it. 
very nice AOIO. Uh, but now today, like the trend is very much of the coloring to be silver, and you see, you know, other jewelry companies like Alex and Ani, and which is another Rhode Island local company, in fact, um, really kind of bring back that that look of that silver titanium type jewelry, um, which which I think is really cool. Yeah, man, and and you know what's funny? Man, on, on top of that, it's also cycling back that now yellow gold is very popular, but but not. The people that are buying the yellow gold are buying the look. They're buying plated. So like a lot of our new stainless designs, we're now plated in yellow gold, and they're actually doing really well. It's Excellent. kind of you – know, it's all cyclical, man. Mm. Awesome. Um, do we want to do five questions again with Matt? Five. No, we haven't done five. I don't think we ever did the five questions We, we, we were not. Too, he was so early on in Stoic Geek's history that we hadn't done five questions. When was that? Oh, last time? Last time. Did you answer five silly questions? Well, you know what? Answer them again. Okay. Matt, are you ready to play five questions? I do like Chick-fil-A. Three words to describe yourself. Donkey show enthusiast. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? A spatula. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? (laughs) Now, you, you was, thought of something and you laughed, so you have to say what you're thinking of. Rolodex of, of uh, uh, porn magazine names, it was like, <laughs> it's like, I was laughing at all the names that were flashing in front of my face. It was, it's too much, man. It was too much. What was the question again? <laughs> if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be, Hustler Playboy Biggins? I would like to say that a book about myself would be called Steve. <laughs> In the popular game of Ask... Wait, 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 wait. I can't... Steve. 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 It's provocative. It's, it's provocative. It, is, it is provocative. I like it. Say, oh, what yeah, does okay. this, Steve, a, 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 a boy <laughs> making his way through the salon land of, of, of cigars. Through the cigar world as a salon, <laughs> as a sole salonist. Salon, a salon, a salon, uh, enthu- salon uh, enthusiast. Uh, Thanks for clearing that one up. Okay. <laughs> In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? I go, I go straight front and I go first every time. Choose two celebrities to be your parents. Uh, who was the kid? Was it Todd Bridges in Different Strokes? I think so. The guy, like everybody's lives got fucked up in that show, so it's, it could be any one of them. I'm going to go Todd Bridges and... Does it have to be too, too, Does it have to be like nope. the, the traditional? We, absolutely form not. Of, we have we have so talked about this. I mean, MSR, huh? <clears throat> two celebrities. You know, they yeah. can be alive or dead, male or female. You're. It, We're it's, very it's, progressive here. That's you're, so yes, you're allowed to choose the two celebrities Stop. to be your parents. I would like to say Todd Bridges and. No, 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 man, no, no. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go Mel Gibson and Danny Glover from Lethal Weapon. There you go. Excellent. As grandparents. Excellent. <clears throat> Matt, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank yep, you very it. much for appearing on the Stoey Geeks. I appreciate it too, Matt. This is this. Is this it? This is all. There's no. This, we can't. You want to talk a little more? This. Wait. This is it. This is it. We, we have a. We have a schedule. I'm sorry. I know it's very. It's very boring and corporate and structured, but we have a schedule to abide by on the show. I know. I'm very lonely here. I mean, that's, why, just... that's why I said we just need to hang out. Then we can, just, we can stay up till hours of the night and, and chat and have fun. I like yeah. it. Very nice. Matt, Matt, you need to cut. we'll get you back for the anniversary show. That sounds good to me, Cooper. I mean, I would you, be yeah, yeah, I think we need to bring you back for the anniversary show as well. Perfect. But, Matt, yeah, don't... Uh, First, thanks again, as always. Uh, don't hang up. <laughs> yeah, we're going to end this segment, and stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 